Okay. But I'm not supposed to talk. Um, this for both of you. Why did you become authors? Uh, I used to be an artist. My mother was a painter. I spent my whole life thinking I was going to draw. That's how I wanted to tell stories. At first, comic books or maybe be a book illustrator. And then uh, when I grew up a little bit, uh, I realized that I wasn't very good at drawing. Um, but I still really wanted to tell stories. And so I actually had to learn reading and writing kind of from scratch when I was out of high school. I had to go back and read all the books that I skipped in school. And I spent all this time kind of teaching myself to write when I had ignored that. Um, because really, always what I wanted to do was tell stories, um, and that was the best way to do it. So. Cool. And Tom? Yeah, for, well, for me, um, you know, I don't know if you know that I have Asperger's. My, uh, my wor the word part of my brain never turns off. The words are coming out constantly. So I've, I've either got to be talking or writing or going crazy, right? So for 27 years or so, all I did was just talk all the time. Drove everybody crazy. And then finally I realized I could start writing stuff down to get, let some of the words out. Cool. Okay. Do you, this for both of you again, do you outline your books? I do a small amount of outlining. Um, often I just, you know, for mine, I, each, each character is going to get a different chapter. I write down each kid's name and basic theme of their chapter. But that's about it. I don't want to chain myself to anything. I want to be free to let things happen because the best parts of my book are the things that happened while I was writing, not yeah. stuff that I knew about ahead of time. I feel pretty much the same. I grew up, I used to write plays and screenplays, and for that you outline every, they make you outline every second of it. Um, and so when I started writing books, I actually tried to do the opposite. Um, I let the outline happen, and subconsciously I think I outline. But I, I think the same thing Tom's saying, when you discover a new thing, you know, your, your character walks into the room and they have a butter knife in their, in their pocket. And you're like, why do they have that? I don't know. Let's find out. And like kind of chasing those little ideas is the best, best part of writing to me. That's from that book you wrote, the butter knife thief. The butter knife thief. Yeah, that yeah. was yeah. great. That one yeah. didn't, uh, well, how many stars did Xander give it though? It he was gave like that six out of zero. ten. No, it was a zero Straight star. zero. Yeah. It was. He's one of those guys writing the Amazon. If I could only give it zero stars, I would only give it zero. <laughs> The butter knife thief. He likes to spread things. Yeah. Okay. Um, how would you come up with the character Peter Nimble? <laughs> What'd you say? How would you come up with Peter Nimble, like blind and? Yeah. This uh, the idea of Peter Nimble for me. Um, I started as an artist, like I said, and I always, uh, every day, I spend some time just doodling and drawing. And every story I've ever written started as a picture in one of my journals. Um, so in the case of Peter Nimble, I drew a picture very close to the first image in the first chapter. Um, I illustrated, uh, did the interiors in this book. Oh, cool. um, uh, so it was, hang on, we'll find it. It was this picture right here, and it was a little baby floating in a basket with a raven perched on the edge that had just pecked out his eyes. And I drew, I literally just drew it, and I'm like, oh, gross. Oh, I wonder what happens next. I that was on a know. Mother's Day card. I it was, yeah, I was giving it to your mother. Uh, <laughs> uh, Thank you for my pet raven. There you go. So the whole idea spun out of, I looked at the kid and I wanted to know more, and so I came up with the story. Um, who made and folded Origami Yoda? Me. Cool. Yeah, but uh, now I'm not the first person to ever fold an origami Yoda. There's a famous Japanese paper folder named Kawahata. He did the most famous Yoda before I even got started. But he's the one that inspired me to make my own version. How about on your book covers? Like me, me. Oh, yeah, I do those. Except for Chewbacca. Because my Chewbacca was called Too Ugly by my publisher. <laughs> <laughs> This, one, this Chewbacca is very like pretty. They this is a good Chewbacca. My wife made this Chewbacca. Really? She is a, I don't know if you know this, she's a children's book illustrator, graphic novelist. So, with that much talent around the house, there was no reason for me to have my ugly Chewbacca. So she, <laughs> she made a good one for me. Do you like origami, like yourself? Hate origami. <laughs> Hate Star Wars. <laughs> Hate kids. No, I'm kidding. I, I've been doing Star Wars. I've been watching Star Wars forever. I've been doing origami forever. So the day that they came together, it was like... Don't hate me, but I've never seen Star Wars. I do hate you. Yeah. You just got so you just got a lost... You just an lost cred, man. Off. Now you only get nine out of ten stars. He totally lost cred. Okay. Now you'll you'll see it and you'll love it someday okay. when you're ready for it. You'll know. Yeah, but get over the wait till you want to watch it because otherwise you're gonna. I know that thing when everyone's like, "This is so great," and then finally I sit down. And I'm like, "All right, show me you're great," and then it's never good. So you gotta wait till one day. Oh, it's so good though. <laughs> How do you guys come up with your book titles? Tom. Oh well, for me it can be an agonizing process. I knew I wanted the princess. I couldn't figure out what to call her, right? 
A perfect one would have been Princess Latte. But kids in middle school aren't walking around with lattes, at least not at school. Uh, so it took forever to figure out. And then when I realized a label maker, I realized that works with the story, you know? That's actually part of the story. It's not just a joke. It's actually the story. So it can be an agonizing process trying to figure out the title. Uh, for me, they just kind of pop into my head. Um, yeah. He's only got two titles. I only got, so I I got like, many times. I've got like 20 books. <laughs> <laughs> and, and why did you decide to Call it and his fantastic eyes. Uh, for me, um, you know, okay, there's a reason for this. My favorite writer is Roald Dahl, um, yeah. and uh, part of the reason I'm interested in thievery is because uh, when I was about 12, I read a short story that he wrote uh, that was called um, The Hitchhiker. The Hitchhiker is this great tale of this guy who's driving down the road and he sees an old man on the side of the road and wants a ride. So he pulls over, he lets the old man in, and we learn, they get to talking, and pretty soon we learn that the old man is actually a, a what he calls a fingersmith, which is to say he is a world class pickpocket and he refers to himself as having fantastic fingers and he's so good as a pickpocket that like he can be like smiling talking to you and next thing you know he's like holding your keys and he's like oh that's so nice and then he's you know holding your wallet and then oh that's, that reminds me now he's got your shoe and um and the story is this really funny tale where they, they get pulled over by the cops and, and this old man outsmarts all the police officers and robs them and tricks them it's really funny uh, but that, I loved that phrase, fantastic fingers. So when I was writing a thief, um, that word was like the only word I could use to describe what Peter Nimble was, and sort of it came from that. Um, okay, what what was your inspiration for like the characters? Was it for real people, or just people you completely made up? It's re totally real people for me. Almost all the characters are based on me, my friends, just people I knew. That, ex that explains Captain Obnoxious EA, who's showing up yes, in the next one. Yes, yes. You know, you're in, you, you, know you're in the, you, you don't read the books. If I've only the read the first two. Yeah, you're in the books, and you don't Which even one? know it. He doesn't even know it, because he doesn't read my books. <laughs> yeah, you're in there. You're somebody's obnoxious boyfriend. <laughs> Am I serious? Yeah, your name is John Oxley. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm totally serious. That's two books I'm in. Awesome. What else are you in? I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I'm in Frankenstein. Christmas? Oh, you're in Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This it's Oxy maple syrup from Canada. Nice. Um, yeah. So, I, I, are you dead serious about that? Yeah, I am serious. Oh my gosh, I feel like such a heel. Yeah, you are. I, wow. I, I've read two of your books. I, that's the same number as you. Yeah, I've mine. read two of your books. <laughs> We're even. I'm not, I'm not a total jerk. Shoot. You know, my wife CC has a random either. What? It's so hard. We have these discussions, and I'm like, "What? Well, there's a scene in Princess Leia. I had to just, like set the whole thing up for you. She's never read my books. What? No. That's crazy. She read some of them, but she hasn't read the whole thing. It is. It's a tall order. Reads all of them. Um, how long does it take you to write a book? <laughs> we have this. It's the exact same time amount for both. Amount of time for both of us, I think. Year and a half. Is that what you? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For me, it's about a year and a half. <clears throat> wow. uh, I'm averaging, uh, I wrote the first draft of Night Gardener nine years ago, and have wrote, written at least a draft a year since then um, to get it out. And then Peter took me uh, about seven years. Um, I'm learning to get faster so that they don't, we don't lose our house and have to live on the street. Um, <laughs> I'd like a little bit of Tom speed. <laughs> exactly. So I'm, I'm slowly, I'm getting a little faster now, but... Oh yeah. What? Why? Sure. Why did you choose to write for like a middle grade audience? For me, those are my favorite books. Uh, they were my favorite books when I was growing up. They're my favorite books now. Uh, when I was eleven, I read Alice in Wonderland, and uh, don't ask me why, but it, I became obsessed with that book, and I read it every night for about twelve years. Um, so I've probably read that book over a hundred times, um, and. I, now I'm kind of sick of it, but there was something about the books that I was reading right when I was kind of your age that like I didn't just read them once I'd read them over and over again. I still read them today um, I think it's the best time of life because your mind is still so open to new ideas You know the older you get kind of the more closed off you get and I like books that take me back to a place of wonder and sense of humor and yeah um, Why Star Wars? It's Star Wars. But you haven't seen the movie, you, you, so you, don't, doesn't know. you don't know. You don't. After you've seen the movie, you'll be like, "Oh, that's why." <laughs> um, are you working on any new books or projects? I am writing the final, the big finale book for the Origami Yoda series. 
It'll be out this summer. Got to do the drawing. Most of the writing is done, and got to do the drawing for it. Do you know the title? I do. I'm afraid I cannot tell you. It's top that secret. Been, that your blog would have gotten very popular if you could have gotten that <laughs> right then. Um, title yeah. reveal. Title reveal. I'm writing the... Actually, no one knows this. I'm writing the sequel to Peter Nimble right now. So. Wait, so what is... is it says they're not related. They're not. They just mean that's a second book. So Peter is totally unrelated. It's its own story, and it's a complete story. And I, for a while, I wasn't going to do a sequel because the Peter Nibble story is really. But they are interconnected because of the bottles. Because of, well, they because of reference to the bottles is made in in, in Night Gardener. Yes. There's. I mean. That's enough to put a, a part of the same cosmology. Okay. Yeah. The multiverse. Yeah. The the, the Night Gardener will be verse. <laughs> the, the Oxyaver. That doesn't have any ring to it. Um, I have a clunky old name. So I'm writing a sequel to Peter Nimble. Um, cool. That was a long answer to, is, are you writing a sequel to Peter Nimble? Yeah, well, someone kept, someone kept jumping in with the... Uh, really? <laughs> so there are going to be six books in this series? Or six seven? books plus the R2-D2 graph book. Do you count that as a book? Like, is Well, I wanted to. I wanted to be a part of the series, but no one else wanted that. So it's sort of a, this extra book that floats around on the edges. And hopefully we will be doing another activity book down the road, because that was a lot of fun to do. That was also probably the most work I've ever done. Because just so much drawing? Or? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of work. Do you have any, like, standalones, like fake mustache? Got fake mustache, Horton Half Pot, got this new, the Quick Pick series, a um, couple picture books. I got all kinds of junk. I got, a, I got a mountain of books that have never been published, you know, that um, don't meet the criteria. Even you would give them no stars. Even you, nice, nice guy that you are, zero, zero out of ten stars. I wish you would give them. Oh, whoa. I that know. Was that oh, was one of my books. I was to bring them over before. Okay, for those, if you don't mind. What are your favorite books? Oh, I like Peter Pan. <laughs> so Tom and I have a long-standing fight because. <laughs> wow. That? He's taking calls in the middle of the interview. Oh, another Look author. They can, they can get in on yeah. Peter Pan. Yeah. Somebody else's people. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite books, perhaps the only perfect text in the Western canon, is a little book called Peter Pan, which Tom Engelberger <laughs> hates with a burning passion that we have spent Zero many out of ten with. stars. <laughs> what? Um, so that's one of my all-time favorite oh, books. But I also, uh, last year I read a book that... I read, I read a couple books that blew my mind last year um, that I couldn't shut up about. And one of them was written by a guy named Jerry Spinelli who did Maniac McGee. Was it Hokey Pokey? It was Hokey Pokey. I read it too. Did you? Yeah. What'd you think? It was good. It was really good. I really, really liked that book. And I got... It made you think. It, it really, really... Like, the ending catches you off guard. It... I, I really, really like wow. that. Wow, that's one we all agree on. Yeah, there we go. I was in the School Library Journal Battle of the Books, and I chose that. as That was the book I picked. That was a very good book. Cool. That was one. Did you read Far, Far Away? I didn't. Did I'm, you read it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was another great book last year that was really... And really Hokey Pokey was written. Like, the way it was written, like, some of the chapters just had one word. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So one of my other favorite books, I talk about it at the end of The Night Gardener, is a book called Something Wicked This Way Comes, uh, which is sort of the original evil circus story. It's written by a guy named Ray Bradbury, um, who wrote a lot of uh, kind of fantasy, spooky fantasy and some kind of science fiction. Um, and that book was, it was actually during a nightmare that I had, because my dad read that book to me, and it traumatized me, that I, I first like had a vision of the character of The Night Gardener. <laughs> um, and so I've been carrying that around with me for 20 years. So The Night Gardener originated from a dream, not an illustration? Well, in that case, The Gardener originated from uh, a dream, um, but the character Molly, the book, when I decided to start writing it, it was because I, uh, I, I all of a sudden had this picture I'd drawn of this red-headed girl who woke up and the windows are closed but there's wind all over the room and there's leaves everywhere and then I couldn't draw it but I, I knew she could hear footsteps over her and that like kind of gave me a whole sense of the story. So here's what I want to know. I mean, I appreciate you giving me eight or nine stars <laughs> but what's your ten star book? Um, I don't think there's been one. Really? That's good. No, save that. I, I'm like that often where I like save the last one and I'm like the best thing will be just just the next thing I did. Neela 2.0 was pretty bad. That was up there? It was, yeah. So good. <laughs> I just need to read it. Hmm. Is it a series? 
Yeah, it's the okay. first book. In oh, great. Place. I got an art for the second book. Oh, nice. See, you're working it. You're getting. I love it. Are those uh, all your questions? Yep. Awesome. This has been fun. Sweet. I wish yeah, people would interview you. us every time. Yeah, that's nice. when it detox. Well, people that have good questions, like Xander. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people interview you and they don't have good questions. So, very good questions. Awesome stuff. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. What does your shirt say? It says, uh, in Java talk, it says, Let them behold my magnificence. <laughs> Which is a Java sort of thing to say. Not the kind of thing I personally would go around saying. Thank <laughs> you.